Hello, welcome. Welcome to the Return to School webinar. I am Leanne Jacobson, Director of Parent Relations and Giving at Lake Forest Academy, and I'm also the parent of an alumna and a rising junior at LFA. It is my pleasure to moderate this evening's webinar. Tonight we have families literally from around the globe and from coast to coast joining us live to learn more about what back to school will look like. Before we begin, I have a few housekeeping comments. Tonight's session is in webinar format with our panelists addressing the audience. After opening remarks, if any of your questions are still unanswered, you can submit your questions in the Q&A function through Zoom. As moderator, I'll be checking there for questions to submit to our panelists. This webinar is being recorded and we will be emailing the recording to all current parents in the coming days. It is now my pleasure to introduce our head of school and current parent, Jose De Jesus. Jose, would you like to get us started? Thank you so much, Leanne, and thank you to you and our advancement team for helping bring us together and wherever you may be, hello. It is good to not see you, but feel your presence through this, uh, through this uh, webinar. And uh, although I think probably we're all ready to be done with a lot of the Zoom uh, in our lives, I will say I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to reach all of you, wherever you may be. Um, as, uh, as quickly and as easily as we can so that we can connect and communicate and, and keep working towards uh, what is our goal, which is ultimately the growth and development of your phenomenal children. Uh, it is really a pleasure to be with all of you. Um, it is really good to uh, have a little bit of a breathing space in the summer. We've been busy, but it's, it hasn't been as crazy as it was over the past year. And, uh, and, and it's been good to have my colleagues and our students get a, a much deserved rest. And I hope that wherever you may be, that you are doing well and that you are enjoying the summer thus far. I also wanna acknowledge a, a couple of uh, groups of people. The first are new families, welcome. Thank you for joining us. You chose us even though the vast majority of you did not even get a chance to come onto campus. And, and, and I also wanna give another special welcome to our second year families because you also have not been able to physically be on campus. And it's this remarkable thing that when we come back together as a community in the fall, um, that for many of us, it's gonna be a lot of new, a lot of firsts, a lot of opportunities. Um, you know, we have a tradition called the all school handshake. And this is my third year as head of school and I have yet to experience a regular one or a moving up day and our graduation, uh, poor Chris Tennyson on this call has had to create and figure out a way to do graduation annually and never, per normal way you know, that we would normally do it. But with that said, what's come across from me is the spirit of LFA, the way that we come together, the way we still celebrate uh, and the way we persevere through what would have been just a little while ago, pretty unimaginable circumstances that we're facing. So I am thrilled to be here with my colleagues. Um, they, they'll introduce themselves a bit, but I, I thought I wanted just to acknowledge Tom Johnson, our Dean of Faculty who is joining us for this call. Um, Anna Kleiner, our Director of Health Services and uh, an and overall health guru, and then uh, uh, a man who needs no introduction, our Associate Head of School, Dean of Students, uh, Mr. Chris Tennyson. Uh, and you already met our phenomenal Leanne Jacobson, who is our, our main parent liaison. Um, so it's great to have my colleagues on this call. Uh, so welcome and hello. Um, we are, uh, I'm coming to you at, at a moment of feeling uh, a lot of excitement about what, where we are and what's ahead for us at LFA. And I'll say I'm grateful that this time last year, uh, we were getting a lot of tough news around the virus. And even though it's clear, very clear that we are far from being done in this journey, uh, I will certainly say that it's, it's good to be getting guidelines that are looking to reopen, um, where it's good to be getting good news around our vaccination rates in our community. Um, it's good to be thinking about school and, 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 and yes, worrying about our health, but also thinking about program very actively and thinking about community and thinking about the things that make LFA so incredibly special. So I'm happy to be joining you at a time when I think we're increasingly getting um, some good news in terms of our ability to reopen LFA um, at, you know, with as much normalcy as possible. Um, we're also very happy that we, because of all of you, and we, we essentially are, gonna, are looking at perhaps our largest enrollment in the history of the Academy. And that is just incredible. That's a tribute to so many people, a tribute to our returning families who hung in with us, whether they were with us from China or from Lake Bluff. Um, it's just amazing how we were able to retain and keep our community together through all this. 
And then we're able to achieve it because of all our new families who have entrusted your children to us. And as an educator, I always believe very deeply that it is a sacred trust. Um, I send my daughter, she's a senior, she's gonna be a senior, which I can't believe, but I send my daughter to LFA and I send my son to Lake Forest Country Day School. And when I do so, I am entrusting the most precious thing in the world to these professionals, to my colleagues, and ultimately to, the, to, to, to our friends at Lake Forest Country Day School. And I can say without a doubt that uh, I, I, I will never take for granted again, the decision that you all make to entrust your children to us. And I think one thing that COVID showed us was how sacred this relationship is between school and family. And one thing that LFA has shown me during this period and shown all of us is what we're capable of when we're unified and connected and linked. So um, uh, really an enormous amount of gratitude, both as a father, but also as a head of school for this incredible community. Um, I'm gonna hand it over to the stars of the show relatively soon. And that is the dynamic duo of Anna Kleiner and Chris Tennyson who have so brilliantly shepherded us through very complex protocols and guidelines and the like, and you'll be hearing from them quite a bit. But I thought it was very important for all of you to hear from me directly around a couple of areas that are getting probably the most attention nationally right now. Um, as many of you probably know, the CDC released guidelines for school reopenings last week. Uh, and along with that, the Illinois Department of Public Health released uh, uh, basically their guidelines that for the most part aligned with the CDC. So that's always good to see that alignment. And that is what came to us. And as part of those guidelines, it was made clear both by Illinois and by CDC that schools had the, uh, the freedom to make the decisions that were best for them based on their unique circumstances and, and, and based on local rates or based on what the dynamics are of vaccination in their communities. So essentially they're giving us guidelines and support, but it is up to us to determine what best serves our community. And I've been very proud at LFA that we've been able to take these guidelines and then apply them to I call LFA the great unicorn school. There is really no one like us. Uh, we are a boarding school in Illinois. Uh, and we are a school that has people from all over the world, local, uh, co-ed, people of different backgrounds and, and socioeconomic backgrounds and, and, and races and sexual orientations. And we take so much pride in the incredible diversity that we have. And as such, it's important that we do everything we can to support our community completely. So when we're making decisions in terms of, of, of what reopening will look like, we are taking the consideration of the guidelines, but ultimately what's really important for us is that we apply it to LFA. And we have been able to do that successfully, always seeking to give as much opportunity and programming to our students while looking to be as safe as possible considering the circumstances. And to say I am proud of the outcomes that we've been able to achieve would be a great understatement. So as we're working this summer, uh, particularly around two big issues, we've done it with an eye towards our particular situation. So there are two areas I wanna address before I hand it over to Chris Tennyson. The first area really has to do with vaccination. One of the big national questions is whether or not vaccines will be required of different members and different communities. And because so far we have a very high faculty and staff vaccination rate of, we believe around over 95% is, is the number, um, along with a very high, at least up to the spring when, when the students left us, vaccination rate amongst our students that we anticipate will be high. Um, we are gonna be able to, to make it so that we will not require vaccination to be able to come back to LFA. Now, with that said, we strongly and deeply recommend vaccination. Uh, and, 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 and if you look at the CDC guidelines, there is clarity. Uh, and that is that uh, there are gonna be, there's gonna be a lot more room and space for people who are vaccinated to engage more fully in overall school activities than there will be for those who are unvaccinated. With that said, we, we respect the fact that, um, that for some of you, the choice may be not to vaccinate your children, which means that we will follow CDC guidelines and require that unvaccinated uh, members of our community, students, faculty, staff alike, uh, will be masking um, when, um, when, when in the community. And that is going to be uh, an important thing that we follow very closely, and we will continue to monitor guidelines and see if there's a shift. But the CDC guidelines and the Illinois guidelines are pretty clear that, uh, that for vaccinated people, um, uh, there, there is a, a certain amount of, I think, of hope and a runway in terms of being able to engage more fully 
Uh, but for unvaccinated people, we have to continue taking some precautions. So we are not requiring vaccination, we are encouraging it. And not only that, we're also offering it. Um, Anna Kleiner did a great job in the spring of bringing access to our community, both to faculty and staff, and then eventually to students. And we will be doing the same. And you're gonna get more detail in August for any families who have not been vaccinated. And we're particularly thinking about our international families. Currently uh, in, in our area, you can go to a Walgreens, you can go to a CVS and get vaccinated for free, pretty much on a walk-in level. And to say that that is an unbelievable privilege is an understatement. Um, there are places all over the world where that is just not a possibility, let alone the fact that our children 12 and over have that level of access. Both my kids are vaccinated, 13 and 17. And I do not take that for granted because you know, I have friends in other countries. I have recently visited another place that it was clear that the kind of access that we have, they do not have and that we have to take that into consideration when we're bringing our community together that includes people from over 30 countries all over the world. So we're gonna make the vaccine available to all students, particularly the students who do not have access to the vaccine in their home nations. As a result, when we start, and we're gonna have the Pfizer vaccine available to, to our students, uh, and starting right, right, right before the first day of classes essentially, we are going to take a, about a six week period where we are going to allow for an immunity to develop. And we will be conducting operations in school and you'll learn more details, but we will be masking indoors because we believe very passionately that it's very important that until all of us who want the vaccine are able to have the vaccine, that we should do what we can as a community to keep them as safe as possible. Moreover, we believe that many of the students that, we, that are part of our community who will not be vaccinated will also be boarders. It's a residential community. And, and it's one of those things, we don't wanna drop the football on the three yard line. We had zero transmission last year in school. We are really proud of it. And we wanna make sure that we come in um, and, 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 and be very thoughtful about how we support those members of our community, our students who just could not access the vaccine. And I know I would want that kind of thoughtfulness if it was my daughter who couldn't get that access. And I'm hoping that for all of you, even if some of you might be a little disappointed in terms of these first few weeks that you can acknowledge and understand why we're doing this. This is about our mission. We believe in responsibility. We believe in caring for each other and we have cared for each other and that we will continue to do that. The good news, however, is that because of the CDC guidelines and because of the high percentage of vaccinated members of our community and even higher at the point of that, at the end of that six week period, we're expecting and, and we're very excited to be able to make masking optional at LFA. And that will then be the next step. And you'll hear all kinds of things from all over the country. California and New York just said, talked about how they're gonna require masking actually um, going into the fall. Uh, you may have heard of Texas and Florida where they've made it optional. Um, and, and, and different jurisdictions are gonna make different decisions. Um, and we are making the best decision with what's in front of us. And we're doing it with a lot of excitement. We're doing it with a lot of enthusiasm and, and at the heart of it, with enormous amount of love for our community. And, and, and we just can't wait for the moment when we can look around and feel like we are protected as best we can. And then we can carry forward um, with knowing, having that knowledge that we've done everything we can to not only educate our students to the best of our ability, but also to keep them as safe as possible. So those two big issues, the vaccine, um, you know, our higher rates have allowed us to make it so that it is highly, highly encouraged and even offered, but not uh, required. And then in terms of the masking and other pieces, and you learn more from Chris and Anna in a second, um, we do feel it's really imperative that we be careful and thoughtful in, those first, in that first window that get us to a point, and I'm already thinking about a way to celebrate the, the great unmasking of LFA. I think we're gonna have a big party uh, and, and, and then move forward uh, with the knowledge that, again, we've done everything we can to both educate our students and keep, us, keep, keep it, everybody safe. So as you can see, I'm excited. Um, I'm, I'm, I feel honored to be a part of this community. I feel humbled to be a part of this community. Um, and I also feel very happy and fortunate to be working with two truly extraordinary educators and, and, and colleagues uh, in, in Anna Kleiner and Chris Tennyson. So, I'm gonna hand it over to Chris in a second and I'll say goodbye before we all head out. I'll, we will be here. We'll be taking your questions, um, but thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of this community. 
Uh, it's going to be an amazing ride and a great journey, whether you're going to be a senior parent and uh, and enjoying all the, the, that comes with that finally. And thank God, we're very, very, very uh, optimistic that we're going to have a beautiful senior year. Or if you're a new family that has chosen to send their students to us, um, we are grateful. We're excited to connect with you, to have you back on campus. Uh, and, uh, and as forever and always, uh, go Caxi. So with that, uh, Chris, please take us away. All righty. Happy summer, everyone, and good evening. Um, thank you again for being here. Um, and I will echo some of Jose's comments by saying, welcome to all the new families, um, especially on the call. Um, as Jose said, my name is Chris Tennyson. I serve LFA as the Associate Head of School and the Dean of Students. And I view my team's responsibility as, as a simple, simple one, and that is to make your child's experience the best it possibly can be. Um, and we take that seriously. And, and I and my team and, and the deans and all the faculty and adult members of our community take that responsibility seriously. Um, I look forward to meeting so many of you on campus and now what's just under a month. I'm very excited about that. It is great to see camps on campus right now and there's a, certainly a buzz, um, but that buzz brings with it an even greater energy when it's um, LFA students. And so, so looking forward to that. Wanted to just kind of echo some of Leanne's comments and just say thank you to those of you that already um, expressed some questions when you RSVP'd for this webinar. Um, Anna and I have some remarks that I hope will answer and address many of those. I've also seen a few questions pop up in the Q&A um, panel. And so you can continue to use that. We will address those, I think, for some of the ones that are already um, put out there. I think some of our comments are going to address those, but please feel free to continue to use that. Um, we are monitoring that. Um, as I said, I'm going to turn this over briefly in a few seconds to Anna so that she can discuss some per pertinent medical information. But I did want to circle back to just echo what Jose said earlier, and that is that the reopening plan that I'm going to kind of lay out in some detail in a little bit gives us the best chance to open as a boarding and day school safely and fully in person. And so we are looking forward to that. On a side note, something that we like to brag about here um, for returning families, you'll remember the name Dr. Vernon. He is a lead epidemiologist for the state of Illinois and the Illinois Department of Public Health. Um, he has seen our reopening plan. We've run it by him. I always like connecting with him. He gave us a, a full-fledged ringing endorsement, so much so that he said that he would send his grandchildren here um, if, if they were of age. And so um, I can also acknowledge, and it's fair to be transparent, we spoke to our faculty and staff about this yesterday. And I think all of us, we would much rather be back in a pre-COVID world or a post-COVID world a few years down the road. And we may not be completely psyched about it. But again, I think that when you begin to hear about what we're going to be able to offer and some of the things that are on the horizon, I think you are genuinely going to be excited. I know I am, I think the other people on this call are, um, and, and that's going to be our job is to build that positive momentum. And so um, without further ado, I'm going to mute myself and turn it over to Anna before she turns it back. Hi everybody, my name is Anna Kleiner. Um, I am the Director of Health Services here at Lake Forest Academy. And um, I'm a family nurse practitioner by training um, and I help with all kinds of health stuff, mainly COVID over the last year or so. Um, it's really great to have you all here. You're fine stand-ins for your kids, but we really look forward to seeing them all back on campus. Um, as Jose and Chris mentioned, I'm just going to dive in a little bit more um, into the details of what our plans are in terms of our reopening plan. So first and foremost, I just want to circle back to vaccination. Um, per guidance from everyone, the single most important action that any individual can take in order to expedite a return to normalcy is to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19. It is not required, but it is so very highly recommended. Um, 
And I am pleased to elaborate um, on what Jose had announced that we will be offering an opportunity for any LFA community members 12 and older to complete their two dose Pfizer BioNTech um, vaccine series. Um, and those dates will be as soon as we can get it done. Um, so the first dose will be offered on um, August 25th, which is the first Wednesday of school um, at such time that everyone has arrived to campus. Um, with the second dose offered um, three weeks later on September 15th. Um, and then, so that, that will be, the, and then full immunity will come two weeks after that. And that's the time at which we'll sort of start reevaluating um, what our immunity is. And I saw a question come in about whether vaccination will be on the honor system. And um, so I'm gonna take a minute just to give a plug for submitting all of your health information because the COVID-19 vaccine card is sort of gonna be a part of that. Um, for all of our vaccinations, we upload them into our medical record, which is Magnus, you guys have all seen it. Um, it's really important for you to upload that information because it's the best way that we understand who's vaccinated and what that will be. If we do not have proof of vaccination for COVID, then um, we will assume that you have not been vaccinated. Um, I'm gonna, give you a, just because I have all of you guys on the call, I wanna give you one more update in terms of um, what we expect uh, just for vaccinations and return to school health stuff. Um, we want everyone to have, all freshmen need to have a current um, Illinois physical. Um, it cannot be a sports physical and it has to be done within one year of the first day of school. Returning students, um, you need some physical on file and they're valid for 395 days. Um, and all seniors, just highlights for different years, all seniors must have a second meningitis vaccine. Um, it has to be given after their 16th birthday. Um, you can see your immunizations at any time in Magnus, but for those that don't have other vaccines in, um, we will also be offering an alternative vaccine day on campus. So for um, tetanus shots and varicella vaccine and that meningitis vaccine and for anyone that's missing um, MMR vaccines, that's gonna be on um, September 29th. And then we'll also be offering flu vaccines on campus uh, to everyone in our community October 6th and October 7th. And that's gonna be a big part of helping to keep everyone well kind of from a, from a larger perspective also. Um, so for, just to go back to the, the COVID plan, because I know that's, that's why you're all here. Um, again, the reason for the masking, as Jose had mentioned, is that not everyone has had the opportunity to complete their COVID vaccines over the summer. So um, we anticipate that they will last for six weeks. Um, and it's very important be, to understand that we're gonna be, it's gonna be dynamic. We're gonna be monitoring vaccination rates, infection rates, both locally and, um, internally. Um, the other major piece of our layered COVID protections that I would like to mention um, is that we are going to be testing our entire community um, on, on their return to campus. Um, and then there, so everyone will be tested either that first week of um, preseason, the week of um, employee orientation is when our employees will be tested, and then that first week of school for those that aren't able to. Um, part of that is because even though we have a large vaccinated community, um, part of that is so that we can kind of have a baseline of everybody. And since people are coming back to LFA from all over the, the world. Um, and then we're also going to plan to continue with weekly testing as we did last year for anyone that is unvaccinated, um, likely for the first six weeks, perhaps beyond that point. It just depends on what our unvaccinated rate is at the end of that first six weeks. Um, in terms of how we will adapt to things, um, we will be monitoring the situation. Uh, some of the metrics we'll be looking at, but not all, are cases per 100,000 locally, test positivity rates, local vaccination rates. Um, and then, you know, just, just as, as Jose mentioned also, people are responding to the CDC guidance um, differently and, and it's sort of to the discretion of the place the place where you are. New York and California had put in place that they would like everyone to mask. Um, IDPH, Illinois Department of Public Health, sent out a uh, clarification just yesterday saying, please, please be cautious. And, and just because you don't have to wear masks um, doesn't mean that you 
should not wear masks necessarily for vaccinated people. Um, the other thing I wanna, we're at the end of this, um, and obviously I'll be back to answer any questions you have, but at the end of this, um, Leanne is gonna send out uh, this document that's our return to school document. At the end of that document, there will be links to several of the places that we will be going to reference um, different kinds of metrics and different kinds of guidelines. So there'll be CDC link to return to school guidance, um, Illinois High School Athletics Association link, Illinois Department of Public Health link, as well as the CDC's um, COVID monitoring dashboard, I guess it is. I would encourage you all to dive in and look at those links because there's nothing to hide here. We just wanna make sure that everybody is on the same page and you guys understand kind of where some of those decisions are coming from. It's a living plan, evolution is guaranteed, but I am so, so hopeful that we're gonna be able to give our kids the best year ever um, and that we're gonna start really strong. So I'm gonna send it back to Chris and I'll be back here in a minute to answer any questions uh, that I can help answer, thanks. Fantastic. Thanks, Anna. Um, and so I'm going to dive into some of the details for returning families and even new families. Um, you all have a good sense, especially the returning families, of what day-to-day -day LFA life could look like, either in a pre-COVID or COVID world. And so the reopening plan actually has about two to three pages of information that talks about kind of many of the different aspects of school life. I'm going to very quickly highlight some of those. Um, questions continue to come in. Thank you to Tom and Anna and Jose for answering those as they come in, either in, in text or um, just by interrupting me, feel free. Um, so as Anna said, or as Jose said, um, masking is going to happen on campus um, during those first six weeks. We are going to mask in all LFA buildings. And so masks will need to cover the nose and the mouth. Uh, cloth masks or disposable masks are the masks that are acceptable. Additionally, you're going to hear a phrase or read a phrase throughout this that talks about layered COVID precautions being in place. Masking is one of those layered COVID precautions, and that's going to allow us to do a number of things. Probably the most important is to return in person. Second is to return to our traditional academic settings, meaning that our classes are going to be held in classrooms. Last year, we had to really pivot and use all sorts of different places all around campus, the dance room, the gym, different lobbies, a little theater, a library we converted into a classroom, you name it, science center basement, you name it, we found it. And so the great thing is right now, we feel very confident that all classes are going to be held in those traditional classrooms, which allows for group work to happen, which allows for our whiteboard surfaces in our classrooms to be utilized when students collaborate together it's going to allow for the academic technology that we have in those classrooms to be utilized um, and to supplement your child's learning. All fantastic things. Question in the uh, Q&A earlier was, will morning meeting and all school meetings gather? Yes, that's our plan. Early on, we're not going to be able to bring everybody together within that capacity. But by the end of those six weeks or whenever those COVID kind of mitigation efforts end early on, once we have a good sense of what our vaccination rate and all those other metrics that Anna described, then we fully anticipate that we'll be back as a community. So what might we do? Well, for morning meetings, what we do anticipate is that half of the advisories would attend morning meeting live and the other half would watch the live stream from their advisory meeting rooms. And then the other day we would flip flop those two things. And so for sure, every student and every adult is going to get an in-person community meeting of sorts, and that's going to be fantastic. Um, I will jump to the opening of school in a little bit to talk about some of those gatherings, um, but we're going to have housekeeping continue to and frequently um, wipe down high touch surfaces. They did a phenomenal job with that. They stretched themselves amazingly thin. Um, we tip our caps to the great work that Sodexo did Additionally, we're going to continue to support healthy hygiene practices. We're going to encourage hand washing. We're going to encourage hand sanitizer use and all of those dispensers are going to remain around campus. We continue to use our enhanced ventilation systems, including air purifiers all around campus, especially in high need areas. Um, for families that were here last year, we had one-way hallways. We had designated entrances and exits. We had one-way stairwells. 
um, it was a true maze getting around campus. That is not going to be necessary this year. And so we're going to be able to allow our students key card access and movement. Again, as we've heard multiple times, when outside, we can be unmasked. And so Tom is already starting to think about uh, certainly along, we've had conversations that, you know, we could envision a lot of teachers deciding, hey, let's have classes outside and let's take advantage of our beautiful grounds and do that whenever possible. Dorm life for boarding students or boarding families, with the exception of masking in our common spaces um, and masking in hallways and bathrooms, our dorm life is going to resemble a lot more of our pre-COVID times. We're going to allow for dorm feeds. We're going to allow for dorm meetings. Obviously, we're going to allow for dorm activities. All of that's going to happen. The reconnection that happens in our dorms is going to be fantastic. Um, we're really excited for that. We've said to our residential dorm parents already, obviously, the more that we can do outside, especially when the weather permits, is going to allow us to feel even greater freedoms. Um, but we're excited about what that's going to be. Weekend activities, we anticipate there being a full offering of all of those again. We anticipate and we feel very confident that sign outs are going to be able to happen both during the weekday and on weekends to other people's homes, including overnights. Obviously, there's going to be some checks with that to make sure that everybody's on board with policy, um, but we feel really excited about that. That's going to be something that our students are really happy about. Um, we can confidently say that eating on campus is going to allow for increased and expanded offerings, the return of self-service dining in a lot of ways, maybe not fully, but in a majority of ways. We're going to have a continuation of grab and go options. Um, I saw a question earlier about masking and will it allow to be continued to be optional? Of course, that's certainly it. And that's one of the reasons why we're thinking about grab and go options, that if students are more comfortable taking that food and perhaps going back to their dorm room or taking it and going and sitting outside, we wanna be able to permit that, allow it, support it, encourage it. Um, our faculty aren't going to be lunch monitors this year, and so we're not going to put the adults in our community in bad spots where they have to do everything that is counter to what we want to do as educators, which is to tell people to spread apart. Will the layout in the dining hall look different? Yes. We are going to have the long tables again, and we're going to zigzag chairs. Unfortunately, that creates some space constraints, and so we're not going to be able to bring back the soft seating yet nor are we gonna be able to bring back the active commons, i.e. pool tables and ping pong tables. But we're hoping that by October, we are pivoting towards that because all of our numbers indicate we can. Um, athletics is a question that's probably on people's minds. We're going to continue to follow IDPH guidelines and per LFA guidelines, that means that for athletics that participate indoors, they're going to be masked. Obviously, if you're in the pool, you can swim with a mask off. Um, but indoor sports are going to wear masks. If you're in our fitness center, you're going to be wearing a mask for those first six weeks. Um, if you're in the common spaces down there, again, locker rooms, we're going to ask that you wear masks. The IDPH has come out and they have said and indicated that any outdoor sport, regardless of status, can be unmasked. Transportation to athletic events, transportation for weekend activities is going to be masked. That is per CDC and IDPH guidelines. In terms of capacity on those, we're still waiting to get final numbers on that, but we do anticipate for returning families. Last year, we had three or four people per van. We believe that we can probably get to seven or eight comfortably and safely at a minimum. And so that's going to allow us again, to expand opportunities, extracurricular, co-curricular weekend activities. Clubs, activities, things like that. Full boat, yes, we are gonna hold a club fair. It's one of the greatest things that we do. The clubs that are running on campus, they advertise, they create booths and they stand and people go around and sign up. It's a great way for new students and returning students to figure out perhaps new passions or figure out ways that they wanna get involved in LFA life. We are gonna hold that on the second F day of school, which I wanna say is somewhere in mid-September. September 10th is the date that resonates with me. What that means is that clubs are going to begin to start to meet again. They're not going to have to do it over Zoom. They can begin to meet in classrooms. I know for a fact that Unidos, which is our Hispanic Heritage um, Club and affinity group on campus, they've already put in for an all-school meeting that they want to run because they're excited for hitting the ground running and celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month with, with 
that runs from mid-September to mid-October. Um, all great things. Um, we're not gonna require a daily symptom screen. However, what we do wanna ask, and we will encourage this, and you are gonna see this ad nauseum, and so I apologize in advance, but we want you to monitor how you are feeling. We want you to disclose, we want you to contact Anna and the health services team. We want you to contact me or my office, Teresa Zay for Maura Johansson directly so that we can mark attendance and do all of those things. Um, we wanna be able to support and, and then be in contact and again, keep everybody safe. Um, we will still have isolation and quarantine. Um, those of you are likely aware, but we'll reiterate it anyway. For, for people who are identified as close contacts, if you are unvaccinated, you would need to quarantine for 14 days. If, if you travel and you are unvaccinated, you will need to quarantine for 14 days. If you are vaccinated and identified as a close contact, you don't need to quarantine as long as you remain asymptomatic. And so that's a really good thing. We envision as especially as vaccination rates creep higher and higher within our community, that we will have less disruption. And that's a really, really good thing. Um, for those of you, myself included, um, at one point or another that may have had to isolate or may have been responsible for people having to quarantine, which is maybe the worst part about this whole thing, um, we envision there'd be less pivoting to remote learning. Question about attendance and what that means. Um, what that means is that we're gonna return to what I'll call our traditional illnesses and school absences. So pre-COVID absences, we all know what those were, which is if it's a sick day and a student's gonna be out of school for a variety of reasons, then it's a sick day. They don't zoom into class, they won't FaceTime into class, and instead they'll make up that work with their teachers who are unbelievably supportive when they're able to return. However, if a student tests positive for COVID and has to isolate, or they have to quarantine as a result of COVID, those students will be permitted to Zoom. We wanna be able to support them. And in a, ver in a pandemic, we need to be supportive of that. Visitors to campus was a question that I know was po uh, posed through Leanne. We are going to permit visitors to campus. And so that's fantastic. And so parents and guardians and college representatives, lecturers, alumni, all of those groups and more are gonna be permitted, spectators for athletic events, as long as they follow our safety protocols, right? And the big one is being masked when in buildings. Um, and so those are gonna be really important things and great things. Um, I'm looking at some others here and um, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit to opening a school because I see senior retreats and some other things there. Opening of school for new families returning families that haven't experienced it. I'm going to use some LFA language that, that I hope, um, if, if it's not familiar, then I will try to define. And so please bear with me. Um, there was a question given to us earlier about will there be class gatherings for students as they look to reconnect? I think one of the great things and one of the themes that I know Jose has put out there to the adults within our community is this idea of reconnecting. And so during preseason, on that Tuesday of preseason, we actually don't have an afternoon practice. And there's going to be a window of time where students are going to be able to kind of get their picture IDs taken, do their concussion testing, do some EKG testing, get their uniforms for sports, all of those types of things. At the back end of that, there's going to be an hour and a half where we're going to have class gatherings where the class advisors and the student leaders and others are going to have designated spots on campus in all likelihood with some activities in all likelihood with food. It's the greatest way to get people to a spot. Um, and so we will do all of those types of things in order to try to encourage that. We then have some free time on the back end where we're going to rely heavily on our returning class leaders and class representatives and say, hey, what, can, what else can we do here? and really look to build it. As ninth grade parents and 12th grade parents are aware, we are offering retreats. Um, the ninth grade retreat is going to be on campus and outdoors as well as some indoor things. And so there would be masks there. Um, they are then gonna also go up to Boundless Adventures up in Wisconsin. And so that will be outdoors, which is really nice. Um, and, and so they'll be able to kind of really reconnect that way. Um, we're excited to be able to offer a ninth grade retreat again in this capacity. Seniors will be masked on their retreat. They will have some indoor things. 
um, Covenant Harbor, which is the destination, they also take COVID quite seriously. And so they're asking that our students and others be masked while there. And so, in fact, our kind of reopening plan and mask policy goes into effect on August 11th or 12th, um, which is when the senior retreat begins. Um, other things, normally on preseason Sunday, which is August 15th, and registration Sunday, which is August 22nd, there are picnics, all school picnics that families are invited to. And if they're on campus, especially boarding families, moving their children into the dorms or day students who are, and families who are coming back to say hello, those picnics are going to happen. We're so excited. It's gonna be awesome on the quad, outside the student center. They are great community moments. New family gatherings, we're gonna hear more about those at the very end and you'll see a visual, those are happening. That's gonna be fantastic that we're able to do those again and I believe it's four of the five are in person, which is truly fantastic. Meetings with advisors on that registration Sunday or some other time if you're a boarding student from out of town but on campus, those are going to happen in person. And so you're gonna to get to make a connection with the person who is the greatest liaison between you and the school. Um, the retreats I already talked about. And then finally, one of the greatest traditions that Jose mentioned is the all school handshake. And for those of you that don't know what this is or haven't fully experienced it, what is the coolest tradition I think in, in, in boarding school or an in independent school world is we line the formal gardens. And this year we're gonna to have to line more space than the formal gardens to allow for a little bit more spacing between people. Um, and what happens is every community member goes around and shakes every other community member's hand. It is a wonderful moment. The press eat it up and we eat it up too. And you walk away from that with smiles and to be perfectly honest, you walk away with it and you immediately go to hand sanitizer or the bathroom sink. Um, but this year, we're not gonna do it as a handshake. We're gonna either do it as a fist bump or we're gonna do it as a wave. If students and people are uncomfortable with that, we are gonna let them opt out and sit off to the side so that they can still witness it. We want it to be comfortable for everyone, but it is a truly fantastic moment. And that is the capstone to kind of the end of preseason. It is the capstone to that first morning when we're on campus. And it is the beginning of what's going to be a truly special year. And so we are unbelievably excited about all of those things. Um, I think there are probably questions that I missed as I was rambling. Um, I hope if nothing else, I've gotten you all excited and would just say that please don't hesitate to reach out when there's questions. Um, you can funnel those through Leanne I would also say that in addition to the LFA reopening plan that's going to be sent out, there's going to be an LFA opening of school calendar. That calendar runs from August 9th, which is when new employee orientation begins here on campus for LFA adults, all the way through August 24th, which is our second day of classes. Um, and it talks about that. And I would be remiss if I didn't talk about this because I know it was a question that was asked multiple, multiple times. What's the dress code going to be this year? Um, and so I didn't, I did not deliberately wait until the end on this one either. <laughs> um, the, the dress code is going, we are going to return to a relaxed dress code. Last year during COVID, because we knew we were going to be masked all the time, we really went to a casual dress code. We are going to return to a relaxed dress code. What does that mean? Um, for our boys or our students that identify according to the male um, kind of binary dress code that we have, at least on paper, um, you would wear a collared shirt. You do not need to wear a tie. Um, you would wear khaki pants or dress pants if the weather is warm enough, which we probably assume it will be in late August and early September, dress shorts are A-OK. -okay. Um, collared shirts, good. For our female students or those that identify as female in our binary system on print, um, those students would wear, there's a lot more flexibility between our female regular dress code and our female relaxed dress code. Um, and maybe what I will do is I will send Leanne as I'm thinking about this now, why don't I take a screenshot of our dress code as it is and I'll include that as an attachment for you so that we can send that out to all of our families as well. Um, but I think um, students not having to wear a tie 
I think will be a, a good thing. That plan is for the first six weeks and then we reserve the right to revisit that um, and, and we likely will. And the nice thing too is these first couple of weeks, we can have some really great conversations with our students about what's working and what's not working. Um, and we fully intend to do that um, in order to make sure that we best support them. So thank you very much. Um, Tom, I don't know if you've seen a question that you wanna jump in and answer or if Jose, you would like to, but I am gonna mute myself because people are probably sick of hearing me. <laughs> I'm not sick of hearing you, Chris Tennyson. Um, uh, there's a question about why we're not requiring the vaccine. And I think every organization has had to make that decision. Uh, we're not requiring it at the moment because we believe that we will not need to, because we believe that our rates are so high, we'll be able to get us to a certain level of, uh, of immunity in our community that won't require it. Um, even the, the US military is not necessarily requiring yet. They're waiting for it to go from emergency use authorization to formal approval. Um, and we recognize that you know, unlike a flu vaccine that's generally been, been tried and tested over time, that there are gonna be some folks who are gonna have some concerns regarding this vaccine that are gonna be a little different from other vaccines. I understand why some organizations have chosen to do that. Um, we've decided to take this tact. Um, like everything that we've discussed generally, there could be a change in guidance, a change in the dynamics that may make us have to, you know, go in a different direction. But we're feeling pretty confident that our, 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 our rates, we're fortunately, our rates are so high and are going to be so high, particularly after that first six week period, that, uh, that we, we don't think it's going to be a, a requirement for us to do it. I do understand the question and, to, and it's a fine one, um, but that's, that's where we decided to go. And in terms of travel guidance, Anna, um, there isn't much in terms of travel guidance, right? Um, just that vaccinate, unvaccinated individuals who travel during the school year, once we've all come together, been tested and kind of established our bubble, um, would have to quarantine for 14 days if they choose to travel during, if unvaccinated people choose to travel during the school year. Um, the other, just to also to elaborate, um, Jose, on the on the not requiring vaccination, one of the one of the reasons for a little more clarity is that right now it's only emergency use authorized, and so we're we're um, wanting to wait for for full authorization before asking families to use something with their children. And and even then, we're we're confident our numbers will be high enough that it may not be necessary. Um, so and we 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 recognize the complexity of the decision for the family. We do, however. Feel pretty strongly and, and, and encourage it the way that the CDC and the way that IDPH and just about every uh, major uh, body has been recommending um, the vaccine. So there's also a question about, um, let's see. Uh, in terms of testing, um, it, it, we're, we're expecting to test as a base, on a baseline level. And again, unless things shift and we have a very strong relationship with Rosalind Franklin, uh, we may have to, you know, if, if down the line we decide we need to get a, a sense of what's going on in the community, we will. But the idea is that we would be testing just as a baseline, on a baseline level to make sure that uh, as we come back from all over the place, um, we, are, um, we, we don't have infection uh, in, in, our, in our community. Um, and then, it, and so therefore, you know, the, te the testing from time to time, most likely we won't need to test um, consistently. You'll, you'll remember even last year with everything that was going on and the virus in a different place without a vaccine, we tested the first two weeks. For those of you who are new, you know, um, we can share this with you. But afterwards, we did not test until the virus surged again. So, you know, weekly testing is not something that is always necessary. And we think in this situation, uh, a baseline test will serve the needs that we have as a community. And we do, again, reserve the right. Another question about communication. Last year, again, for those of you who are, are new, we, we communicated on a weekly basis on every Friday. Uh, either me, uh, Chris, or Anna communicated. I anticipate we will communicate quite a bit early on in the first few weeks to, to give you a sense of what is going on dynamically. But as the numbers of vaccinated members of the community get, get really high, then we'll probably communicate more on an as needed basis. But again, we can make adjustments. It's not a very difficult thing to do for us. Um, we, uh, we, we enjoyed being able to reach out to families and get questions last year. So we can certainly pivot to more communication, but uh, most likely you can anticipate uh, more communication early. And then as we start to transition to uh, a, a more normal kind of situation at school, 
then I hope you will hear a lot less from us about COVID-19. Uh, and if you do need to hear from us, you will be sure to hear from us. And we, we've taken a lot of pride in pretty transparent and communicating um, you know, along the way, and we will continue to do so. Any other questions emerge, Tom or Leanne? Yeah. Uh, Chris, maybe can answer this. Uh, someone asked about uh, families being able to visit their students in their dorm rooms. And I guess it's better good to just address visitors on campus in general, as that was very limited last year. Chris, do you want to take that? Sure. Yeah. So we anticipate that that families coming to visit their students will be allowed to in their dorms room, dorm rooms. Obviously, um, at the very end, I know I went on for a long time. Visitors on campus will need to be masked if they enter any LFA building. Also, obviously, they'll want to follow our other precautions, which is if they're not feeling well, please don't come to campus. Um, we want them to, to make sure that we all stay safe. But yes, um, boarding families will be able to, they'll be able to fully move their child into the dorm. Um, they will be able to come and visit their child in building um, and do all of those things. And so that's going to be excellent for those boarding families that were here last year. We had very strict move in times, move out times, all of those kind of things. We, this gives us a little bit more flexibility now. Um, we've expanded the windows. You'll see that on preseason Sunday, which is August 15th, we have a block of time for new families, new boarding families to move in. And then we have a block of time for returning families to move in. And so it's a longer window, which allows a little bit more spacing, but it also allows us to give some more attention to our new boarding families. Um, but short answer long is yes, um, families will be able to. Um, just wanted to touch about two other things that I kind of keep coming up. One is about the senior retreat and why not push it back or what have you. One is that the, the site that we're using, Covenant Harbor, is a pretty busy one. And, and so we've booked this date, but many of the activities are going to be outside. It's on the water. Um, they have great outdoor space. And so we anticipate many of the activities, if not the majority, close to 80 to 90 percent, are going to be outdoors. Um, at night, there's bonfires and those types of things. And so the students are going to be outside the majority of that time in order to be able to connect and bond. They'll be in their rooms when they're going to sleep. Um, and similar to a dorm room, the two people or three people or four people in their room will be able to be unmasked with door closed. Um, but, but in other common spaces, we're going to want them to be masked. Um, I saw another question in there. Um, I know dress code, I talked about it very quickly at the end. Um, uh, we, I will attach that and it will accompany the link and other information. Um, the schedule for moving in will be on the opening of school calendar. So please download that, print it out, put it on the fridge or chalkboard, whatever you do with that, throw it out if you want to, but I wouldn't do that. Um, then um, other things, preseason picnic, yes. How do I sign up for sports was something that appeared a few times. Again, Anna, Anna mentioned this earlier. The Magnus Health and summer registration information has so many things in there that are really important. Not only can you offer your vaccination card as proof um, and upload that, you can upload all of the medical information that we need, but there's also a lot of information about general permissions. If you're a boarding family, can your child sign off campus? What permissions do they need? But also, what sport do they intend to play in the fall? Um, and that gives us a really good sense. And the more that you all can do that and help us out, the quicker we can get a sense of what our numbers are looking like internally. I believe as of today, we have about 35% fully complete. Um, we're normally tracking a little bit higher, but we know that this is also a COVID summer. And so if coming out of this, we can start to fill those things out, that will be really useful. And I know Darren Madeley, who's our athletic director, would really appreciate having that information. I, I also want to say that, you know, this, the date today is, I just checked, is July 14th. So we're about midway through the summer. Normally, we wouldn't be reaching out in this way in the non-pandemic context. Uh, so a lot of the questions that are being asked about just the operations of the school will be answered as the Dean of Students Office communicates a little bit later in August as we get closer to the beginning of school. So uh, we promise we'll keep you informed as always. Uh, uh, Chris and, and his office do a great job in, in, in communicating what the requirements are. Anna and her team will continue to communicate medical needs. Um, but just so you know that, uh, that some, those questions will be answered. This is not unusual. Uh, this is an unusual time for us to be connecting with community, we're doing it because instead of sending you an email 
with this information. We felt it was just good for you to see us, to have a sense of the thinking. Um, and also I hope picking up some of the enthusiasm that we're feeling uh, for, for, for this year. Um, and, uh, and, 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 you know, so we'll continue looking at some of the questions, but just beware that we will of course continue. This is not the last time you're gonna hear from us before we get back together uh, in person. Um, there was a question um, about, um, let's see. Um, Zay, do you want me to address a couple while you try to find yeah, that go one? Ahead, Tom, please. So there was a question about uh, just the school calendar, the macro calendar. We are returning to kind of what we would consider a traditional calendar. So our fall exams will be back in December. Last year, they were before Thanksgiving. We will not have a planned e-learning period this year. We will have a normal spring break, which runs from uh, March 18th through April 3rd, a two-week spring break. Uh, we will not, no longer have those midweek breaks that we had last year. We had the cycle breaks on Wednesdays, many weeks. Those will not be there this year. Uh, and someone asked about classes. What will class sizes be like? Our, our classroom experience is going to be really back to what we would consider normal. We'll be in our normal rooms. All of our teaching faculty are back on campus. Classes will be normal size, which depending on the course could be anywhere from four to 18 in a classroom, generally 10 or 12 kids. Um, so that experience will be very typical and normal for us, which would be great. Thank you, Tom. There are a couple of minutes left. I'm wondering if any of my colleagues have anything else that they would say before, uh, you know, before I say a couple of words and Leanne brings us home. No, I would I would just say thank you and uh, and um, looking forward to being able to see as many of you, if not all of you, in person in in a month or or so. And it's going to be a it's going to be a truly great year. So great, and we will continue to monitor uh, the situation. We we we've got a team that um, that I, th I think w w w was was already pretty good and was is battle tested this past year, and uh, and so we are actively communicating with one another, communicating with. We're very fortunate to have really two experts, uh, Dr. Singh and Dr. Vernon, who we can communicate with. Uh, we have good relationship with Lake County Health. Uh, and uh, area schools and, uh, and the like, and uh, our, our PA, please reach out to them. Um, they are a great resource. Aida, as our new uh, PA president, is a, a phenomenal resource that you can reach out to, and Leanne, uh, you know, we're very fortunate to have Leanne as well as, as someone to, to connect with if you have questions or concerns. Along with that, you can reach out to us. You know, we're here for you. Uh, uh, we want you to feel as comfortable as possible uh, coming into the fall. And, uh, and we're happy to answer any questions. And if we can't answer them, we'll get to someone who can. So feel free to have the exchanges. Um, you know, I think Leanne is a particularly good uh, place to go and, and she, she knows where things are supposed to uh, be forwarded as a result. Um, so I, I'll, just, I'll just close by saying again, uh, thank you. Um, I had, uh, this past weekend, I was with my daughter uh, who was in camp uh, out, in, out in, in, in New England and, uh, and we were talking uh, in the car, she got a, a bit of a, of a reprieve, and, and we were we were driving, uh, and and she just talked about how uh, there were students in her cat. I mean, she's she's a kind of a counselor in training, so there are thirty five young women, all juniors and seniors, who are living in a big dorm together, and 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 she said that she's one of the very few people in that entire dorm who could say that they had a semblance of a year, uh, a year that uh, where she was able to grow and learn. And I'm grateful to my colleagues, uh, both on this call and outside of this call to have allowed for that. Uh, and the way we did that, the way we were able to achieve that was by holding two things in hand and doing so and staying steady through, through the storm. The first one was this belief that it was important for us to be in person, that it was important for us as much as possible to offer everything we could to our, uh, to our students to help them grow and learn in these crucial moments of their lives, right? That was one thing that really drove us. It drives us every single day for over a hundred years here at LFA. Um, the second one though, was this, this real commitment to being as safe as we possibly could in doing so. And when we felt that we could combine those two, we were pretty bold in, in moving forward and in, in, in doing what we could in service to our students. But when we felt that there was incongruous, we did the right thing in taking a pause or asking the questions and doing what we needed to do to make sure that um, there was that alignment between what we were hoping to achieve programmatically 
and what we felt it was safe to achieve. I promise you as head of school that we will continue to take this very seriously, that we will continue to be vigilant through this period because we are not done with COVID. But I also promise that the goal that we had that made it so that we offered more than I think any high school in the country. I have a, I have a new colleague who comes from a different school who said that they believe that LFA was able to offer more for our students than any high school in the country. That spirit is still there. Our hope is to move to greater normalcy. Our hope is to do everything we can for our students. And, and, and I hope you can hear that and what we have to say, but I also you can hear uh, the care and the love that we have for our community and the importance to do everything we can to bring us together in the best stead. I think this is gonna be a phenomenal year. I think so many things we maybe we took for granted previously, we will no longer take for granted. I know for me, every time I wake up in the morning, uh, I, you know, I, I feel even more honored to have the opportunity to work with your phenomenal young people. So we can't wait to have them back. Well, actually we can wait a little bit longer. We, we have some vacation time ahead a little bit, um, but we can't hate, wait to eventually have them come back. I wish you all a great summer. Please take care of yourselves. Please have your children take care of themselves as best as possible. This has been a heck of a year. You know, a couple of things I wanna also add that uh, we've been able to do. We have added, uh, you know, under Anna's leadership, um, we have added uh, uh, some, some more counseling uh, 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 to, our, to our staff. So we just hired a new counselor, Nirali, who's a phenomenal alum, is joining us and joining Jen Maidley. Um, and, and we've actually taken some of their teaching responsibility away to allow them more counseling space. We are very actively thinking about how are we gonna reconnect and be very conscious of the range of experiences that people are gonna have. Everything from students who have not been at LFA since last March, right? To students who've been with us the entire time. Uh, everything from students who, uh, who, who saw illness and, 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 and saw communities who were really uh, ravaged by this virus to, to children who fortunately uh, were able to be in an environment where uh, they didn't deal with that. And, and we're preparing for that range. We're, 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 we're upping our capacity to be as responsive as possible. And when we're doing our retreats, we're doing it with an eye towards uh, bringing our community together the best way possible. So we're very consciously thinking about how to bring our adults back together, how to bring our community back together and, and recognizing that we have been through a, a, a historic moment uh, this past year to honor that, to support people in that, at the same time, holding the excitement that we have for what's ahead. So uh, um, uh, th that, that is, that is, that, that is the, the, the thick and the thin of it. Uh, we are here for you. Thank you so much again. Uh, and, uh, and, and I hope you have beautiful summers. Make sure to care for yourselves, to get some rest and be ready for what's gonna be one of the best years in the history of Lake Forest Academy. So with that, I'm gonna thank my colleagues for uh, their just general awesomeness and hand it back to, to Leanne. Yeah, thank you, Jose. And thank you, um, parents and guardians, for joining us tonight. Before you leave, I'm going to throw up a slide um, that shows some exciting um, dates um, for us that are going to be starting. Let's see here. Okay. All right, so you are going to be see, looking at um, the dates for our new family receptions. And it, this is not just for new families. Um, we are so pleased that we are going to welcome back last year's new families. So freshmen and transfer um, families from last year, I'm one of them myself. Um, you are going to be getting the invitation as well to be joining us for the new family receptions. We have four in-person dates um, plus a virtual option. The invitations will be going out um, potentially next week or shortly thereafter. And there's some dates for boarding students move in, um, registration, and please mark your calendars now for um, an in-person parents weekend on the weekend of October 15th and 16th. So um, again, um, families, thank you so much um, for sharing your time with us. And we really look forward to getting to know you better in the fall semester. And until then, um, we hope that you all enjoy your summer. Thank you and have a good evening. Bye everyone. <laughs>